the Volvo V40 is readying itself for an India launch, we have the exclusive review. Mercedes-Benz has taken the CLS into diesel territory, we drive it. And it's time to make one of our viewers very happy, the lucky winner of the CNB Viewer's Choice two-wheeler contest. Ladies and gents, boys and girls, thank you for being with us on CNB. I am Siddharth Vinayak Patnikar. You've had a glimpse of that Volvo V40. It is an exclusive CNB review that's coming at you. And the reason we are going to be fussing about that segment, and here you have another example from there, the CLA from Mercedes-Benz, is because this is where a lot of the action seems to be concentrated in terms of new model launches and also significant growth. As much as about maybe a quarter of this entire premium car space is now looking like it will belong to the compacts. And so, Volvo hopes to be able to bite off a bigger piece of that pie with the V40. It is looking like a very good offering from an Indian context. We've had the chance, of course, to drive the car, so here's the review. The entry premium car space in India has steadily been growing, with the BMW X1 kicking things off in 2010. Now you have the Audi Q3 and A3, Mercedes-Benz A, B, CLA and GLA class, the BMW 1 Series and Volvo's V40 Cross Country, fighting it out in the segment and with different body styles to boot. Given the growing interest in the segment, I believe we should also have this car very soon. The regular V40, if you will. Now with what Audi has managed to do, with the A3 and its entry pricing, is just sort of change the dynamics in that space just a little bit because till now, you know, you had the A-Class and uh, you, you got the uh, 1 Series, but it's a sedan and so the proposition starts to change. Also, what Volvo will want to do with this car is to have a sort of a distinct value kind of a proposition with the V40 because the cross-country already occupies the slightly higher end of that segment and this whole entry premium space is only going to get more competitive and only going to get bigger. So to try and make some sort of an impact, you know, just get those footfalls into your dealerships, just like what BMW achieved a few years ago with the X1. Yeah, maybe you've got to start uh, playing around and teasing that 20 lakh price point. Will Volvo do that? I don't know, but it certainly is something that someone has got to do soon. Volvo will certainly get noticed if it did do that, isn't it? The V40 has five petrol and four diesel variants with outputs varying from 120 to 245 bhp. The car with me is the most powerful diesel. The D4 is a 2-litre unit which comes in 175 and 190 bhp outputs and has a generous 400 Nm of torque. There is a choice of a 6-speed manual or auto transmission. This one is automatic. The D4 delivers its peak torque fairly quickly, but does suffer from some lag. The gear ratios do compound the problem somewhat, and the engine can get a bit unresponsive, below 1500 RPM. But the car makes up for all that with precise steering, sharp braking and very impressive handling around corners especially. Very often we get so caught up in the performance aspect of a vehicle that we tend to forget some of the other things that really are important for a driver. 
driving position being one of them. Now in this car, I found that that's really spot on. I mean, there's something uh, to be said about just how well that's been planned and designed. The size of the steering, the position of the steering itself, the seat, especially the support that I'm getting for my upper and middle back, just it's just perfect. It all comes together really, really well. And uh, the paddle shifters, everything, just ergonomically, it's working for me. Now, of course, that's individual and it may not work for some other drivers, but I find that it's not always that I'll get a car that uh, just sort of fits me so well. That is working for me on this particular one. And that's the thing. This is a compact, very comfortable car with good dynamics and yes, good looks too. The face is familiar Volvo territory. That will change in the future once that new XC90-like family look starts to kick in. But this is going to stay for a while. Nice headlamp cluster. You've got a little bit of an LED element for the parking light. There is a daytime running light down there in the bumper. The car isn't as raised as uh, the V40 Cross Country, nor does it have all that black cladding running along the side or over the wheel arches. That differentiates it, obviously, from that car. At the back, thankfully, you still get that nice stylish hatch door, the one with the black enamel uh, sort of an element in it. I like that because it separates it from the other cars in the segment. Also, it kind of protrudes out and along the side gives you a sense that there is space in the boot. That's where the V badging kicks in as well because uh, it is supposed to be kind of like a station wagon and of course it is a definite hatchback uh, isn't it take a look at the space it does offer you to me that's going to be a bit of a usb because uh, it starts to get into that b-class kind of territory with the kind of space it has and i like that because one thing we do know is that there is a greater acceptance now for hatchbacks in the premium space in india and so a car like this could work one little styling element that i do like the way the pillar comes down here and then there's a little bit of a curve into the metal. Nice touch. The V40 is expected to drive into India this year. Volvo is finalizing the feasibility of launching this model and we should have some firmed up plans soon. Tell us how you liked the car though and whether or not you would like to see it come in and at that tantalizing price that stays well and firmly below 25 lakh rupees at that. So that's the Volvo V40. Tell us how you like the car and whether you think it is appealing for our market. Now remember, Volvo already offers the V40 Cross Country variant, which is a slightly more rugged looking car with a slightly higher ground clearance. And uh, this week, we've also had the petrol variant of the V40 Cross Country already driving in. So uh, it seems to be building up a little bit of that family portfolio for this model, but it is going to be the regular car, the regular V40, that will come in with a more attractive price point, we think. So uh, pretty interesting times. In fact, it is interesting times for the luxury brigade in general. Another big entrant this week has been the Audi TT Coupe, a flagship sort of a car for the brand, because of course it's not looking at volumes, but it's already looking like the year has started on a great note for Audi. I managed to have a quick chat with Joe King, who heads the business here in India. I can tell you really candidly that this car behind me has always been one of my favorites. So I'm really pleased to see uh, the first generation of the TT here as well. And uh, Joe King joins us for a quick chat on the TT and uh, everything else that's happening with Audi. Thanks, Joe. Great to see you. Yeah. Great to see that too, I have to yeah. say. And of course, a pleasure to see you. Uh, it's nice that you, you decided to do this, um, you know, little throwback to just what the TT represents. Because in India, we've not necessarily had that kind of heritage connect, if you want to call it yeah. that. Um, do you think it's something that even even the customers, when they come in, are they, are they going to like to see this? Look, I think it, it tells the story. I mean, this was a real design icon. 1995 Frankfurt Motor Show, this car changed the landscape about what a, a sports car is. And it's really, when it came into the market in 1998, it took the world by storm. It really set uh, a new story, if you like, for Audi. Uh, it moved to the second generation, if you like, which was a, a truly grown-up sports car, as well as maintaining that particular TT design icon look. And now with the, the next one, I think we've just taken it that next level up again. 
It was just a few days ago that I drove the car, and uh, yes, I can tell you that it's 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 a really fun and a, and a true representation of what a TT should be. So so congratulations to Audi for that. Uh, it's good to see that the car has driven in, you know, as the coupe, and then of course you might do the other variants later. But uh, was that important to get, you know, the the the, the true blue TT coupe in? Yeah, look, I think it's you know it. it it tells the story, like you said, the first car was such a wonderful success and uh, maintaining that heritage, maintaining that icon, if you like, uh, is really, really important. Okay, the heritage may not be the same, we haven't been as, as long in India, but worldwide it's, it's, it's very important. I think uh, the coupe, it's a true sports car um, and that's very, very practical as well as you would have noticed driving around. So. Yes, that it is. You can drive it in city traffic, yeah. unlike some of the others. And uh, in India, that is saying something. It was a good start to the year. Uh, we are, of course, very, very thrilled with the A3 being our, our NDTV car of the year. Uh, in impetus like that, um, how does that work for the brand? Because that is uh, historic in some ways. Yeah, look, uh, there's lots of awards, but there's uh, really very few that really make a difference. And, and to, to be the first luxury car to win the NDTV Car and Bike Show award was an enormous thrill. We were shocked. I think I was ready to, to clap for, for uh, many others, and we were really, really, really thrilled and surprised to, to win that. That car, um, you know, it won so many awards. Uh, it's done such a phenomenal job for us. We have a real attraction, I think, to the young achievers. That car spoke to them. Uh, we've now launched the A3 Cabriolet and that's been just an amazing success. I think that car has really captured the hearts and minds of the Indian consumer. We've done far more than we ever expected in such a short time. Congratulations on this one. Thank Thanks you, Joe. Thanks very much. Great, great day. Good to see you. So Joe is really upbeat about what's happening here in India right now and I can tell you that the facelifted Q3 will be Audi's next launch here in the Indian market, followed by the Q7 as well, the new generation. Let's slip into a short break. We have our sector snapshot with the other big news of the week coming up. Welcome back to CNB. Now let's get on with that gorgeous Mercedes-Benz CLS. Now this is a car that's known perhaps as much for its very good looks as for creating its own segment when the first generation had arrived many years ago. Now with the current car, it's finally time for Mercedes-Benz to bring in the diesel version to India. It in fact replaces the petrol car altogether, which is perhaps more relevant for us. Bala drove it and here are the details. The Mercedes-Benz CLS is in a class of its own. This is the original four-door coupe, now in its second generation since 2010. The car now gets its last tweak before the company starts to think about a generation change that is likely around 2017. And that includes getting the diesel engine to Indian buyers at last. That also means it replaces the earlier petrol offering completely. The CLS class now gets the same engine as the E250 CDI sedan and the ML250 CDI SUV. So really we were not looking for any major surprises here, in engine performance terms anyway. Now the new 4-cylinder diesel engine does pack a bit of punch. You've got about 201 bhp. But what's interesting is that you've got the peak torque kicking in as early as 1600 rpm making the overall performance slightly better but the engine does doesn't feel too refined you've got lots of noise coming in especially when you're going on high speeds at the highway uh, you've got a little bit too much noise creeping into the cabin 
But the seven-speed gearbox performs really well. It has been tweaked to be mated better to the new four-cylinder diesel engine. Of course, you do get an optional sports mode for a bit more fun, and you do get pattern shifters for a sporty feel. We got unlucky with some rain on the highway, but the car's comfortable ride quality made up for the messy roads. The CLS has an adjustable air suspension standard which keeps things really smooth. The car's steering offers great feedback and is extremely precise, which adds to the driving fun. Now the CLS was launched in India just about a year back, but in its petrol avatar. And now it's back in the 2015 facelifted model, but with a diesel heart. But there are some subtle styling changes too. Uh, not that the CLS needed to look any more attractive, but there is a hint that the Mercedes-Benz family look has come on the CLS as well. Noticeably from the front, you can see that diamond grille uh, with the single slat, something that you'll also see on the A-Class. And you've got that highly advanced multi-beam headlamps, which comes with lots and lots of features. But it's really from the side that the car really takes your breath away. So you've got that trademark sloping roof line which gives the CLS a lot more sporty and racing character. Something you probably also notice on the CLA. But it's the CLS that has set the benchmark with regards to the coupe kind of attractive styling. Well, to be fair, that's where the CLA got the idea, frankly. The cabin of the new CLS is rather plush, with a 14-speaker Harman Kardon sound system and the new cloud-based applications available for the command infotainment system. And that includes the NDTV app, by the way. The transmission tunnel means this is exclusively a luxurious two-seater at the rear. The new CLS 250 CDI is imported as a completely built unit or CBU and has been priced at 76 lakh 50 thousand rupees ex showroom Delhi. Right, folks, now every year we get really excited about our awards process. We're very proud of it and we're very excited also that you get integrated into the awards uh, in terms of the viewer's choice contest and that particular category. You did choose the Jixer as your viewer's choice bike of the year and one lucky viewer, a gentleman from Ambala, was the lucky winner. We've got him and we've got his new bike. Suzuki Jixer. Once again, Suzuki Jixer. Suzuki Chiksa had quite a special outing at the 2015 NDTV Car and Bike Awards, sweeping both the coveted two-wheeler of the year and the viewer's choice two-wheeler of the year. The viewer's choice award category continues to see huge response like every year and this time the lucky one to be chosen among the thousands who voted for the Jigsa was 25-year-old Daven Patra from Ambala. An accountant at a car showroom, Daven Batra can't hide his excitement as he heads out to pick up his dream ride. When I first time, I didn't have trust that I had won the bike. और जब सेकंड टाइम एनडीटीवी वालों ने दोबारा कॉल की तब थोड़ा उन्होंने मुझे वीडियो क्लिप वगैरह भेजी कि मुझे तब विश्वास हुआ कि मैंने बाइक विन की है शोरूम जाते हुए बहुत खुशी हो रही है कि मैं पहले भी कई बारी शोरूम गया था लेकिन अब एनडीटीवी वालों की तरफ से जो अवार्ड मिला वो वही बाइक मिली है जो मैं लेना चाह रहा था वो बाइक लेते हुए बहुत खुशी हो रही है सो वी ऑल सेट टू वेलकम दावेन टू पिक अप हिज न्यू सुजुकी जिक्सा नाइस लिटिल बैनर वेलकमिंग अस एज वेल एज दावेन मेकिंग इट अ लॉट मोर स्पेशल टुडे सो इट्स गोइंग टू बी एक्साइटिंग फॉर हिम so let's go welcome him. Davin gets a quick briefing from the Nikun Suzuki showroom staff on the features of the Suzuki Jixa. Suzuki says the Jixa continues to get a strong demand, especially from young buyers like Davin, who find the street bike design quite appealing. The best thing is that its look is the most beloved, and its average engine is much better. जो हमें स्पोर्ट्स बाइक में चाहिए वो सब कुछ है इसके अंदर आपका ड्राइविंग कैसे है आप लार्जली सिटी में राइड करते हैं लॉन्ग ड्राइव में चलते हैं अभी मिक्सअप जब जब टाइम मिले लॉन्ग ड्राइव पे भी चले जाते हैं 
कहीं आउटिंग में जाना हो तो बाइक पे ही प्रेफर करते हैं ज्यादा गुड लक एंड सेफ ड्राइविंग ऑलवेज वेयर हेलमेट ओके थैंक यू Davin also took his new ride out for a quick spin around the pleasant Ambala Ghat roads and we wish him the best as lovely riding memories lie ahead for him Thank you CNB That's pretty much it for CNB this week. I hope you've enjoyed the program. A very happy the vein there with his new Jixa and uh, I want to thank all of you of course for supporting that process for us. That's a very important award category even for the automobile industry let me tell you. On that note, please wear your helmets, please wear your seat belts. I'll see you next week.